full among uh, with all the friends from all over the world, and it's great to see such a good participation today. Um, why should we be doing uh, looking at impact of uh, radiology on the outcome of spinal cord injuries? That's that's a, a million dollar question that we have over the years worked really hard to find out uh, different ways and different mechanisms how to uh, come up with the different type of studies. These are actually the planes of Aptabad uh, in north of Pakistan. And some of these, uh, this, these sites are stunning. Hopefully you guys can visit it someday. Now we know that you know, our simple plane x-rays have been replaced by availability and efficacy of modern multi-detector CT imaging. Um, so the ability to predict functional outcome, which can influ influence the rehabilitation strategies, the surgeries, and uh, talking to the families about it and have a better understanding of the degree of neurological impairment related to spinal cord injury in a patient who has got other kinds of injuries as well. And then assessment of neurological injury in children where we can predict without examining where examination could be unreliable in these patients. So uh, we know that uh, MRI T2 weighted can give you pretty good uh, prognostic um, indicators. So for example, interspinal hemorrhages with more than one centimeter long, and as long as the longitudinal T2 weighted changes are more than three centimeter long are poor prognosis. A normal initial MRI is usually associated with a complete recovery. Uh, so we looked at these fracture dislocations, uh, 135 and 268 patients in both groups. And we found that patients without fracture dislocation, when you compare that with patients with fracture dislocation, then those patients with fracture dislocation tend to present with a more severe degree of initial injury and display less potential for motor recovery at one year follow-up. So, and then we looked at the size of the hemorrhage, the cord edema, and if there were no findings. So the most uh, um, common finding was cord edema without hemorrhage in 40% and sizable focus of hemorrhage in 33%. And in this study, they found that patients with presence of sizable focus of hemorrhage more than one centimeter had larger, larger cord edema and more severe grade of initial HCI impairment with a poor uh, recovery at follow-up. And then came up, came up the basic score, the brain and spinal injury score. They had 131 patients in it. They divided these into five scores, the basic zero with no appreciable intramedullary cord signal abnormality, so completely normal. Uh, basic one, when there's T2 hyperintensity only uh, confined to the central gray matter. Basic two, when it goes beyond the central gray matter into the white matter. And then when the whole extent, uh, extent of the spinal cord is involved, and if there is spinal cord involvement along with um, hemorrhages. And so you can look at the you know, same thing in, at uh, different kind of images. And what they found was that it, depending on the ASIA score, if your ASIA score was D and E, majority of these patients again walked and became ASIA E. So all of them improved with no neurology, uh, nothing on basic zero. Basic one, majority of them improved, 100% of them improved to D and E. And if you had basic score two, um, majority of the patients improved beyond C, D. Whereas if you had basic score three, Half of these patients did not improve and half did uh, to some extent. If you had basic four, basic, basically meaning having hemorrhages as well, 100% of these patients did not improve at the time of discharge. So this gives us some kind of predictability. So it's supposed to be an excellent prognostic potential across all spinal cord injury severities. It can distinguish between a patient who presents with an ACIA A and then improves before discharge from those who will not recover having a significant uh, function afterwards. Um, again, another study, multivariate analysis of uh, uh, MRI biomarkers. And what they looked at is the um, axial grade, the basic score, the sagittal grade, length of injury, maximum canal compromise, and maximum canal uh, compression. And when you look at these patients, so sagittal length, uh, we have the maximal spinal cord compression, maximum canal compromise, and the basic score. And they looked at all of these and found that the intrinsic measures of spinal cord pathology on acute MRI imaging 
the basic score had the best predicted neurological impairment in the acute spinal cord injury and prognosis. So again, it came out to be the best possible. What about DTI? DTI is a more sensitive biomarker compared to T2-weighted imaging for both kinds of spinal cord injuries, traumatic, non-traumatic, but we were able to analyze spinal cord structure integrity and to measure the microstructural alteration that affects the diffusion of water molecule in the pathology. So most of the studies have been on animals, total of 39 human studies, only a couple of studies with one year long uh, term follow-up. Um, and basically at the end of all these studies, you come up with a parameter, the DTI parameters reflects the severity of the spinal cord injury and correlates well with Asia outcome in non-hemorrhagic spinal cord injury. And you, know, you can see again, um, DTI of these patients. What about functional MRI? It's a non-invasive modality in which we use uh, signal changes related to both the blood oxygen level dependent contrast and signal enhancement from extracellular water protons causes, caused by increase in water contents in the area. This looks like to be the future for predicting outcome um, uh, for spinal cord injury. Uh, so in conclusion, if you look at all these studies, the facet dislocation can give you a, a, a suggestion of a poor neurological outcome with a class two injury um, evidence. Uh, T2-weighted MR, acceptable method to rapidly screen patients with cervical injury. Axial grading basic score provides the best and easy means to predict the outcome, class three evidence. DTI may help predict outcome in both acute and chronic spinal cord injury. So thank you guys, a wonderful, and I bring greetings from Pakistan.